All right, lesson for this week. So we are going to do these things. We're going to do uh, an encryption assignment. Um, that's the only digital thing for this week. Uh, you're going to do uh, three projects on LOSH, pro uh, LOSH project. Um, so the first thing will be a full wave rectifier. You're going to add a capacitor. You're going to make a transistor circuit as an amplifier. And then you're going to make a transistor a switch circuit with relay. So I'm going to show those three things first and then we'll finish with the encryption. <clears throat> so you go on flush project and you're going to create a full wave rectifier circuit. Okay, so I got, just want to confirm I'm recording. Everything looks good. Um, by the way, I've been uh, fooling around on the, um, uh, so there was an echo, if you noticed, on the videos, uh, the first ones I did, because I had the, I was uh, um, capturing like two or three audio inputs. OBS is it's a very powerful uh, application, and uh, I'm learning it right as I'm going. Um, I'm really liking this tool, by the way, it's really powerful. But anyway, um, um, I've been looking at uh, some of the tools here, if you're interested uh filters and so on my voice right now i'm using a, a tool that we use in music all the time when you record uh, it's called an expander and so what it does is when my voice is really uh slow uh low volumes like this it it uh boosts the the gain right with a certain slope so that's the ratio here so anyway just uh there's cool tools in here uh, you can even put a compressor. If I'm screaming my head off, it would clamp it down. Uh, very cool tools. So it's really powerful. Oh, and notice I'm having the music as background, right? Because it's, it's cool, right? So just by the way, this is really good. Uh, anyway, any of that trance uh, melodic uh, techno mix stuff I kind of like. So anyway, it's your... We're going to enjoy that in the background. Okay, we were going to make a full wave rectifier. Okay, so you go on LOSH projects, you go circuits, you create a blank circuit, right? You have a blank canvas. Um, okay, come on. Okay. Um, so you're going I love this website for all the circuits. I'm just starting to dig in. Um, I had already looked uh, uh, for some of the circuits here for uh, for uh, matching lines. This is super advanced stuff here. So I'm obviously not going to teach you this stuff, but I, I'm so impressed with this, uh, uh, with this app website. It's all open source, it's all free. Uh, wow, you could teach yourself so much, folks, uh, using this. Um, so those, all of you guys going in, anything having to do with physics, physics and electrical engineering, go crazy with this website. There is so much to eat in here. So you're going to do this. See this here? Diodes, full wave rectifier. This is awesome. Oh, I didn't notice earlier. It has one with filter. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's exactly what I taught you guys, right? And so you can see the uh, what happens as the. Uh, so let's open the other one. You can exactly see what happens as the uh, as the um, as the wave. So let's slow it down. Right, so right now we're slowing it down. We'll slow it down even further, right? So it's it's an AC signal, right? And so as this is, so now it's going into the negatives, right? So it's going to come this way, right? So it went through and then you can see what happens, right? So let's get rid of the capacitor, right? And so you can see it live. Uh, man, do I like that thing. It's beautiful, right? So notice here, 
swing into the positive and the negatives, but then on the other side, it's going to go positive and then bounce again positive, right? So it's rectifying our signal. Now, there's a reason why it's clipping like this, because the diodes start conducting at 0.7 volts. Okay, so that's actually why you see this little clipping. That's so beautiful. It's, it's just beautiful. Okay, so your challenge is to draw this but from scratch, okay, on your own. Okay, so you can obviously use uh, this as a template, okay, to start but uh, you're trying to build your own and to add a capacitor here. Okay, so I've been playing around quite a bit uh, this afternoon on it. Uh, it's, it's a rich uh, application. Okay? So there's quite a bit to learn. Um, so you're going to go away, go away. Okay, so we're going to try to do it from scratch. So you go blank circuit, right? So we need a power source. So we go input outputs, uh, inputs and sources. So we're going to use an AC voltage source two terminal. So you put it on this side. Now we're in North America, right? I don't even know why he's using 40 Hertz. Um, because even in England, they use 50. Unless I'm mistaken. I know in Europe they use 50. I'm pretty sure it's 50 in some of you feel free to prove to prove it. Actually, let's um, let's mimic a real real. Uh... Oh, I don't want another one. Okay, so a couple of tricks, right? You can use Control Z to undo. Now, look, because I have the um, the cross here as my cursor, that means I'm going to draw more power sources. So I don't want that. Control Z, hit Escape. Right? And now it becomes a narrow, so you can extend the terminals. Okay, so this is what we'll do. I need a diode. Now there's a bunch of shortcuts. So a diode is a passive. What am I saying? It's an active. My apologies. You see it's a small D, right? Lowercase D. If you go into this, as you have the arrow, hit D, and then you're ready to draw a diode. It's super cool. Okay, so there's a bunch of shortcuts like that. Okay, so I'm not expecting this to look super pretty. Okay, now because I hit D, I can draw more diodes, right? So I can just go. So remember the shape. Now, if you don't see the connection being blue here, that means your node is not connecting. Okay, so pay attention to that. So I still have the diode selected. Okay, so I go. So notice it went blue, right? Okay, so my diodes are all going to the right. Notice it turned blue, meaning it connected. Okay, so you don't need it to be fancier than that. So hit the escape, right? So it becomes just trying to align them so it doesn't look too ugly. Okay, hit W, that means wire. Okay, so your AC source connects to the to the node where the two diodes are. Uh, how do I explain that? This one's coming this way, and this one's coming that way. It's hard to explain. Okay, so connect here, and this one connects here. Beautiful. And now I'm going. To go here connect another wire here wire here I'm going to put a resistor as my load so R right isn't that lovely right now notice as I go with my selector over the resistor, if I scroll up and down with two fingers on my mouse cursor, right, 
I can roll. Oh no, it needs to be select. Oh, it did. My apologies. So it, it hung in there. So look at that. I can, by just sliding up and down over the resistor, I can get another value. It's just wonderful. Okay, so hit that. Doesn't matter, 47 ohms. So something like a toaster, folks, is really low uh, ohms. It's around 10. I, I don't know by heart, okay, don't quote me, but it's low. So the current will be quite high. You see that we're reading like seven amps. It's actually more. So it means it's around seven, eight, yep. Yeah, 15 amps, that's about right. Anyway, so how are we going so first of all, hit your load, uh, right click on it. And you're going to add a scope. Actually, before you do this, you're going to click on your source, right click, view in scope. Right, so it's going to show your uh, your input. I'm telling you this, this software is really well done. And then go on the load, hit view scope, and then you're going to see the two signals. Look at that. Okay, beautiful. So this is obviously not very good, right? If you were to put fancy electronics straight on this, it, it would damage the, at least the power supply, okay, of the electronics. So you don't want that. So you need to uh, to filter this out. So you need, you guessed it, you need our capacitor to go in parallel with my resistor. So keep a low resistor like that. Raw, I think it's small c, so it's a passive, yeah, small c. Now we could use a, a polarized for this actually, so we'll go big c, so shift c, I can draw a big capacitor, and then, so this is a pro, oh, it connected. So see, it, see the nodes are connecting blue, okay? Okay, so now you're watching this, and you're going, so it did work, right? So you see it's got red nodes here. So that means it's not connecting. So this is why I wanted you guys to see this. Okay, so right here, if I hit split wire, so I, you, you hit the node, right click, and you go I saw it there. But... So I saw split wire control click. Okay, so I just have to go on my node, hit control and click. Obviously it didn't work. Control. Right click now, there we go. Split wire and see now it connected. So notice it's not flattening my signal, right? So why is that? It's because my current is too great. So look what's going to happen as I'm getting my lows resistor value to go way up. I'll bring it to one kilo ohm, or, right? So as I'm going way higher, right? So Notice, and it's even like it's beautiful. So you could find the resistor value at which your signal gets pretty flat. You see this? There's a little ripple here. It's amazing. Okay, so you would send that to me. Uh, just show me. Just find. Uh, now, you could have changed the value of the capacitor instead, right? So let's go to a way lower. I haven't uh, mastered how do you uh, slide all of this. There's got to be a way. So that's to select. Okay. 
Um, I wanted to do something right. I wanted to get this value way lower. So go to, I don't know, 1K, right? But then get the value of this capacitor way higher. Notice. go to one farad if you want it. So it's already working really well. So that's exactly what I told you guys. In um, in car audio systems, for example, they have monster capacitors that if you touch, if they were to be charged, and if you touch, like you're dead, basically. And like they put one farad sometimes. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay, so it has to be blue and then you go up. So what's, how low do I need to get my load? Oh, the other way. Start seeing the, uh... oh, so see at 15 ohms, right? Okay. Okay, so that's awesome. Okay, so it, it works really well. Okay, so just do something like this from scratch, okay? And, um, and you, you export your file. Now, um, the, the fastest way for me to, to mark your thing is send me export as link. Okay, so that's the best. Okay, so export as link, create a short, and then copy paste this, right? And that's where you're going to send me, okay? So you're going to just send me three links, okay? And watch what happens if I create a new, um, if I just go onto that URL, it will draw the, sorry, it will draw the circuit. So well done. All free, all open source. It's amazing. Okay, so that's our first. Okay, well, this one. Okay, so that's your first thing that you do, okay? You got a capacitor. Transistor as amplifier. Okay, if this one is a bit of work, okay? It's quite a bit of work. Okay, so go here, we're done. Okay. Uh, all right, well, let's go circuit, Big circuit. So what I want you guys to create is this one. Transistor, it's the common emitter. Okay, so in grade 12, I'm going to be teaching more in details some of the families of transistor uh, circuits for amplifier. For, for the grade 11, I, I just want you guys to focus on this one. You don't need uh, Maybell, but you the name of that circuit, maybe. Okay. Uh, so it's a common emitter amplifier. So it's a one stage transistor amplifier, it's called. And uh, this is the one with the most gain in volts. Okay. It gets technical, really technical. But so this is what I want you guys to redraw. Okay, so this is our transistor here, right? Um, I'll, I'll just keep it very short, okay? So these two resistors here, they, they do the bias, it's called, for the transistor, so that it works well. This is our source, so it's just a signal, right? You need the capacitor here to get rid of the DC in your AC signal. So I would want you guys to know this. This one does the same, but on the output now. So a capacitor gets, filters out the DC, right? Uh, component. Okay, so it, it gets, it, it leaves, it lets, sorry, it lets just the AC signal component to go through. Uh, this is just to pull it down, okay? So, so we can read something here and these two here, they give you your gain, okay? So we need to redraw that. Okay, so uh, here's what you need to notice. It's 10 times greater here, right? So 10K, 1K, 10K, 110K. It's okay if you're not exactly on those numbers. Same for here, you think 10 microfarads here. Okay, this one high value as well. Okay, you need a power source of 
about 20 volts. Now notice if I right click on my transistor, uh, edit, change the gain, see that? Beta HFE. Okay. So if I go, well, before I change it, just want you guys to notice, this source here, edit, has a volts uh, peak, so peak to peak it's at one volt, right? So half is 500 millivolts. Right? So you can see that in the scope here. Okay, so notice what's our output here? Look at that, five volts, close to five. So this transistor, if you were to wire that on a breadboard and you sing in a mic, so the mic picks up 500 millivolts, you would output five volts clean of your voice. This is a beautiful example here. Well, this is a typical example of a transistor used as an amplifier. Okay, so I want you guys to recreate that from scratch. So feel free to pull that. And um, I want you guys to just do it quick. So it's okay if it's not very pretty, okay? So let's keep it there. I have another window open here. I'll just try to create it really quick from scratch, okay? So I need a source, two terminals, 40 hertz is not important, but the volts is important. So have that at 0.5, okay, okay. So we can have that in the scope right away. So that'll be on our left, that's good to go. You need a capacitor, put that in line. Right. I know it by heart, okay, because I've I've seen them quite a bit over the years. So uh, let's put it to five. Okay. Escape. So if I scroll down on it, I'll be able to bring it to that. Transistor. So it's a pat it's an active component. So you see passive versus active? I'd like you guys to know that, okay? So passive are resistors, capacitor, coils, switches, relays, and so on. So that's what I thought. N is is the short for trans an NPN, so goes lowercase n. Draw your transistor here. About here. Okay, it works really well this way. our resistors so you see the node here so I'll draw from here so I needed a hundred K about a hundred doesn't matter okay, I'm still on R align it here 10 K perfect put a wire here W Put another wire here, W, right, align using the grid, uh, R, need a resistor here, make sure it goes blue, right, so I'm going to leave it at 1K, this one here is going to be 10K, scroll up, and it works well, doesn't matter how many of those. Wire, W. Uh, an output, but I need a capacitor, so lowercase c. R to here. Wire from here. This, crank it up to a really high value. Okay just to have a high imp impedance of a wire. Okay. Okay. And this here, this is what we'll put on our scope for output. Now, of course, it doesn't give a, a good signal because I don't have a source here. So I'm going to put, and that's my last thing, input. So I'm going to input 
Uh, all right, so there's big V, right? It's short. I'm learning this thing, right? And I'm going, so big V right here, that will give me situations like that earlier where so it's good that you see that Just scrolling up on it. So we need to edit. Yeah, yeah, that should work. What am I missing? that it's not working because it guys will run into situations like that. So what am I doing? Can I just pause the video so you guys don't wait forever? I'll just pause. Okay. Back from the pause. Okay, so um so it was a really silly mistake. I had forgotten my ground here. Um uh, that's actually a in real life, when you make real circuits, uh, that's actually a common mistake that happened to uh, um, me at least once or twice. Uh, when I was especially younger, it's been a while I've done like a lot of electronics like components, but uh, I remember when I did back then, 
Anyway, so I was missing the ground. Now I've just been fooling around quite a bit here on the values. Um, uh, I'm not sure I had exactly the same values as this circuit, apart from the fives. And I've um, been struggling to have the wave go plus and minus here, instead of just floating above the positive. I haven't actually tried exactly five, so let me try that just now. Surprising. It's, it's, it's almost the same. So you see, I changed my numbers here. So let's go to 10 again. But anyway, you play with those values, right? And, uh, you can even enter like 1k, 1 meg. So, on, do you see this here? Like, I'm, I'm only above positive, right? So I'm not going in the negatives. But anyway, the, the 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 you can still see the wave, and I have a huge gain, right? So 400 millivolts. Now peak to peak, I'm at around 8.5 volts. So half of that gives around. 4 volts, which is 100 points, right? So my HFE, right? You see in the bottom there, beta, it's 100. So what do you think is going to happen if I go to 200 HFE? Well, you guessed it, right? Now I'm going to have, I shall have a much wider. It's not affected. There's a lot of math. Um, if you're curious, uh, you, know, you feel free to go in there and, and check it out. Uh, it's not this one, it's this one. So this is the kind of math that we learn when we're in electronics. So the gain will be somewhere here. There's I don't remember them by heart, but uh, you have quite a bit of. So the gain is here. So this is beautiful stuff. Um, okay, so it's it's too advanced for us for grade eleven, obviously. So okay, so I want something to look like this. Okay, it, it the, don't, don't bother if it's clipping. Okay, this is it. It, it just wouldn't be a, a circuit you could sell, basically, right? Because the sound with this torque right now. Okay. Okay, so this is the hard one. Okay, so you. Do the same, you export as link, okay, create a short URL, copy that, email that to me, okay, and then, and then we're good to go. That's my circuit original, okay. Um, just so I know that you're not just copying my tiny URL, I'm going to ask you to put the gain of this guy at 150, okay? Okay, so you do that, okay. My third one is the easiest one. I want, so that's, so transistors as amplifiers, they're used in analog, right? So when circuits, uh, when your signal is analog, I just want to check that I'm still recording. It's a long video. Okay, so I want us to use it digitally. Okay, not just for computers and phones, right? But uh, something to be turned on and off, right? So, so we'll use uh, a transistor um, with a relay in line with the collector. So, what does that look like? Circuits, blank. Um, so we'll use an NPN. Uh, we'll use a, a, a relay in the, uh, on the collector side here. You see the C. Draw. 
that's a active opponent. Nope, my opponent's. Put it in the uh, so big R. Shift R. Now draw it outside so you know what it looks like. Now you're looking at this and you're like, what is this ugly thing? Well, it's really easy. So you've got two sides. So you've got the coil side. Right? So this is what you'll connect on the collector. This here, you'll collect, you'll connect on, uh, actually connect here. The switch, I'm still on wire. Because I'll go connect straight right here. Five volts. It's going to be my ground. Here, we'll put a switch. Put a voltage source yeah it's too much current but in five should work So there are, they dish out infinite current. I just cleaned it up here. I think I had the, this as uh, turned off here. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's good that you see this, okay? Because it, um, it might, uh, might help you uh, getting out of, uh, of a rut if you're stuck. Okay, so this works. So this is your relay. This is my transistor. So now that would be off right here. And then here would be what you would connect, right? So a light bulb, put a light bulb. Right now it's off, and when I click this, right, the light bulb has current going. So if I click the switch, okay. So so what's going on is this is just turned off, turned on, and um, so a relay. What's a relay? Right, relay. Okay, so it looks like this, very short. Um, you have about 50, 30 of them in any car, even the super modern uh, Mercedes, Toyota, they still have them. They're ubiquitous, uh, all cars have them. So they're pretty big squares. They look like, uh, it's hard to say the size of. About the size of your big, of, of your thumb, roughly, uh, a bit bigger. And uh, inside they have a coil, and it's just a switch. Okay? So let's see some pictures. Okay, so there's a coil, and a 
then, okay, so that's a good little feature here. So you power coil, and then it just turns on a switch and, and turns it off, okay? So, uh, so you can use a transistor to, to activate the relay. Okay, and so it's the same, okay? I just send a bit of current in my base of the transistor and then it turns on a huge current, right? So this is this is what the transistors are used for. Let's go back to our, our amplifier. So that's the one I drew, right? So there's a tiny signal. 0.4 volts, right, going in, and and so it's it's pulling in and out, right, and it's controlling a huge current going through uh, the whole transistor, right. So remember what, what we talked about. Okay? okay, that sums up our three circuits. Um, So, I mean, you can create a note, right? Here, create a note. Okay, so have your tiny URLs here, blah, blah, blah. So I'll copy them, whatever. And then we'll save. Now, I'm realizing as I'm doing this, this is not going to be a good example because the file is going to be so small already. Uh, give it a shot. Uh, but I, I don't think it'll be very good. So let's call it test. Okay. If I shut that. got a little file here okay so now what you do for the last part you're going to download 7-zip it's called so this is again now I have it installed here this is open source I've been using this since uh, it's been 10 years 20 years um, so you're going to create a new a new um, how do they call it? A new, uh, well, a new file, okay? Uh, and because I have it installed, I'm going to be able to send that thing to 7-zip, an archive, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, so uh, you can add to this one. Um, so to keep it simple, add it to a uh, to test zip. So uh, 7-zip has its own proprietary 7z extension. Zip has been around for years. When I was in high school, as uh, .zips existed, and we had a command line tool. It was really old-fashioned. So today you can use it all inside of a window. Uh, so add to. Okay, so. It created it this way. This is not what I want. Hold on. Same thing. I don't use this every day. Control. Okay, I'm going to pause this again. Okay, so I got it. It wasn't that hard. Um, Um, so you you select the file. So my file was test point dot text. So you select it. Then you hit add. And now it's going to open a new window. Now this is where everything's going to happen. 
So put it in the archive format.zip. Now there's other ones. Tar is a big one too out there. 7z is one. Uh, so for example, when I've rooted phones, many of the uh, huge files, like we're talking gigabytes, right? Two gigabytes, I remember downloading uh, images, right? And they were in tar, right? So, but zip is very standard for, uh, you know, home use. Uh, but anyway, you, 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 you do your research. Um, uh, so let's do a zip. So what we're trying to do, okay? Remember, we had a lesson on this. Uh, I'll just, I'll just put the, uh, just pull the, the draw thing. Sorry. Right? I have my thing, so I'll just show it to you guys. Cursor. Cursor. Okay, so in digital right so what we got is a stream of zeros and one and this is totally random right right and picture this being hundreds of bits long it's, it's thousands of thousands more right but the idea is this is all numerical this is what's interesting and valuable for us so remember uh, compression was we were doing math tricks on this series of bits right so that was one of the things that digital allowed us so because it's numeric right first compared to analog right this allowed us to do compression as in well uh, as in mp3s how about as an MP4s? How about all the stuff you guys stream? Well, I started streaming, so I can't say it's just you guys. Right, so that's one of the key applications. Not only that, but it's immune to noise. And that's immune to noise. So what is that? So that means uh, the example I gave you guys is when I'm streaming episode three of the Mandalorian like bits for bits I'm getting exactly the same data stream as whoever is streaming at their, at their home uh, in their home it's absolutely unbelievable we're talking gazillion of gazillion of bits okay so you could never do that in analog now the other cool thing is that you can encrypt the data, okay? And so what, what does that mean? Is again, we take that stream of bits and we scramble it using a key. Oh, that's your, I'm sorry, that's your password, okay? And so there's tons of technology on this. There's a ton of, of Technology and science on this, you can do a PhD on this. Uh, so I'll let you guys research that. Uh, sorry, I was trying to go here. Yes. So my point was that you can pick, right, like uh, the, the length of the key and so on. Right, so here, so to make it super secure, it's 256. So this is the length of your key by which it will encrypt, scramble the bits. Anything else I need here? So I'll, I'll enter a, a password. Uh, can I see my, no, it's a short password. Right. Uh, technology. So this is not a great password. It is wonderful, but that's an example. Of it's wonderful. Zip crypto. Now AES. This is more standard. 
hit OK. That should encrypt. This is a tiny file, right? There's nothing to encrypt this, basically. So what I'm curious about is how smaller has this gotten, but it can't be that smaller. Because there's so at 87 bytes, right? it now because <laughs> now it had to encrypt the the uh, uh, had to put the key right let me try to find a photo or a photo somewhere quick images Here's the video well how about I take the uh, uh, it's the biggest of those here want to find the biggest one okay so that's the biggest one here this that's a good example it's good okay so we'll take this one now it might be too big take this one because i don't want to wait too long right so 70 megs let's go we'll send it to zip uh, so we'll add to a new archive right, so see this add to a new archive a new zip this will do this okay now cancel yes start over right because i'm trying to uh, trying to have you uh give it a give it a password So now what it's doing, it's processing the whole stream of bytes, right? And it says it's able to, to compress by some ratio. So we're able to, 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 to get a, a file 8% smaller because it compressed it. Did I say that right here? So it's trying, right? Pressing at the same time as it's uh, zipping. Okay, but now anyway, it's been encrypted. Okay, so let's just double check. So 64 meg by. Yeah, so that sounds right. Okay, so I got 69 megabytes. Compressed it a bit. That that was not my goal though. But the point here is, if I double click on my zipped file. That, that was my point. Okay, so, the, <laughs> so the only way to get to the file is if I enter my password. So technology. I'll make I'll make a mistake. I'll forget the S, and it should not open. Wrong password. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so to open it, I need to have the right password.
Oh, that's because. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sign. That's not the right one. I did. I did. Yeah. It's in video. My apologies. So this one. Send to the uh, to the, the seven zip. So open archive there. And if I double click here, it's going to ask. My apologies, I was because I was too fast here. Technology is awesome. See, so it's all okay. Perfect. So that was my point. Okay, so you're going to do that. Oh wait, it's all right there. Okay, so it is working. This is it for the lesson. Okay. Hope it was 